So at this point, we know most of the big picture, but there is one final piece of the puzzle to put together, and that's how we combine our relationships together with our models to actually create data with our models. So I'm gonna hit Control tilde here inside of our text editor, and this will bring up the terminal. And now I just have it taking up full screen. You can adjust this right here. This is gonna give us a little bit more room to work with compared to working directly inside of our terminal application. And I'm gonna run node ace ripple to jump into a ripple session. Await load models to load up our models. So let's start with one-to-one -one relationships. So let's create a brand new user. So let's do const user equals await models dot user dot create. Okay, we'll pass in an object here. I think this takes a full name. I'll put my name here, email, We'll just do test at test.com and then a password of password. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. Cool. So now we should have our user. If we go ahead and serialize that, we'll see my details printed out. However, at present, if we go ahead and try to await user.load profile and we do user.profile, we're going to get null because we haven't actually created a profile for this user. With our factory, we have this creating all of our profiles along with our users, which is why we went ahead and created a brand new user here so that we can walk through this. So there's a couple of ways that we can actually add data with a relationship for our user. So we could do await user dot related as we've done prior to reach through the relationship and then provide the relationship name. So that would be our profile. So far, we've just used this to access the relation query builder, but we can also call create directly off of this as well for relationships pointing to a single record. And we just provided an object for the record that we wanna create. So from our user model, we're grabbing the relationship for our profile, and then we're gonna create a new profile specifically for the user that we started this call from. Lucid will automatically bind this user's ID onto the profile that ends up getting created. So we'll automatically set that user ID that's on our profile model just via this relationship. Meaning all that we have to do is define the, I think we called it the biography column, and everything else will be automatically taken care of for our current profile. So this is my bio. Let's hit enter there. And uh oh, cannot define biography on profile model since it's not defined as a model property. So I got the name wrong, my bad. Let's go check our profile model here. Oh, it's called description. Okay, we'll elevate our panel size back up for our terminal. I'll go ahead and hit up and I'll switch our biography column to description. Run that and there we go. So now if we await user.load profile and then user.profile, and we go ahead and serialize that, we're gonna see that we actually get back that newly created profile instance. Additionally, whenever we called create, it immediately returned the model that was created as a result as well. So you could do const profile equals await user related profile dot create and get back that brand new profile that way as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and await user profile delete to delete that user's profile. Okay, so now if we do user profile dot is deleted, we're gonna get back true. Remember that this is a flag that holds whether or not the current record has been deleted out of the database using the model. And this paves way for us to create a brand new profile. Okay, so I've cleared out our terminal and reloaded our repl session to give us some more working room here. Let's go ahead and grab that user again. So const user equals await models user dot find by or fail. And we'll find by email and we provided that with test at test.com. Okay, so now we should have our user and if we type out user, we could see in the hint down here that we do indeed have that user. We can also create a brand new record by instantiating the model itself as well. So we can do const profile equals new models dot profile. Within our code, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here. This would be the same as doing const profile equals new profile directly with our model class. Okay, so we'll run that. On the profile, we'll set the description value equal to, we'll just do test right now to give it something. So at this point, we have a profile instance of our model and a user instance of our model but our profile instance is not persisted into the database, nor is it bound to our user. Well, we can do both of those with one call by doing await user.relatedProfile to reach through with the relationship again and calling dot save and providing it the entire model that we want to relate with, which would be our profile. And this will both persist our profile into the database and relate it to our user record as well. So if we run this and then await user load profile user dot profile let's go ahead and serialize that there is our brand new profile with our test description once more let's go ahead and await user profile dot delete okay back with a fresh slate here we have our user once more another way that we can join these relationships together and this one is unique to belongs to relationships 
so this will be coming at it from our profile side, is to use associate and disassociate. So const profile equals new, and let's do models.profile once more, instantiating a new instance of our profile class. Then we'll do profile.description equals, well, I, I probably spelled that wrong, but we'll just do associated there. And now from our profile side, we can await profile.related, reach for the user relationship, and we can associate our profile with the particular user instance that we have. Again, this will save our profile into the database and set its user ID with the user's ID that we've provided in. We'll go ahead and run that. And now if we await, and let's do this from our user side, user.load profile, user.profile.serialize once more, we'll see that our profile was successfully associated with this user. Now, the user ID relationship for our profile is required, but if this relationship were nullable, we could then dissociate these two from one another as well by doing something relatively similar to our associate call. We could await profile.related user and then call dot dissociate to pluck the two apart from one another, essentially removing the user ID off our profile and setting it to null. Again, our profile's user ID is required. It's not nullable in the database. So if I were to run this, we're going to get an error due to that violation of the not null constraint. But if that relationship were nullable, that's one way that you could dissociate the two from one another. All right, so we're back into a fresh REPL session with everything cleared out. Similarly to how we created a record through the relationship for our one-to-one -one relationship between our user and our profile, we could do the same using a create many call for one-to-many relationships as well. So if we create a new sinist here, I'm gonna do const me because uh, I find sinist rather hard to spell correctly, equals await models dot sinist dot create provide in a first name of Tom and a last name of Godwidge. So we'll just create a record here for myself. And I believe headshot URL has an empty string default. So we should be good to just create a record with that. Cool. Everything looks good there. If we do await me dot related, and I'm going to collapse this back down and take a look to see what we call this relationship. We have movies directed and movies written as there has many relationships here. So we could do either one of those for our example, movies written dot and we call create many here to create many in one go. So we can provide in an array. And then inside of our array, we just need to create objects for however many movies we want to add and fill them out with each movie's details. So let's see, we have our status ID. I'm just going to default that to one. Our director ID will default that to one. Our writer ID will be automatically set via the relationship because we're reaching through this user via the movie's written relationship, which is bound by the written ID. So we can pass over the written ID, go to title, do written by me or something like that. And I believe everything else there is optional. So let's move on to our second one, status ID. We'll just do one here, director ID. We'll do one again, title written by me too. Let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, just like create, it's going to return back each of the movies that was created with this relationship. And now we should be able to do await me.load movies written and then me dot movies written and we'll map over those movie movie dot serialize like so and we get back both movies written by me and written by me too all right so we're back with a fresh REPL session with me defined once more and again just like with our user profile example whenever we called save through the relationship we took a model instance that wasn't yet persisted into the database saved it and bound it to the user all in one blow we can do that exact same thing here using save many for our one-to-many relationships. So let's do const movie one equals new models movie, and we'll create a new instance of that. Now, rather than doing movie one dot status ID, so on and so forth, taking up multiple lines here, what we could alternatively do is do movie one dot merge, and this will merge whatever object data we provide into our current movie data. So for example, we could just set, just as we did with our create call, our status ID of one, uh, how about for this one, we set these movies as directed. So we'll set our writer ID rather than our director ID. And then our title directed by me one, and we'll merge that data in. Okay, so now if we do movie one dot title, we see it was directed by me one. Cool, so let's do const movie two equals new models movie, create an instance of that. And we can do movie two dot merge status ID of one writer, ID of two and title of directed by me two, And we'll merge that in. So now for movie two dot title, we have directed by me. 
Okay, so let's take await me dot related. We'll reach for our movies directed relationship and we'll dot save many and provide an, an array of all of the movies that we want to save with this movies directed relationship to me. So we'll do movie one and movie two. We'll run that. And now we should be able to await me dot load movies directed me dot movies directed dot map movie movie dot serialize and we should see directed by me one and directed by me two awesome so now we know how to create one to one and one to many relationships through our models via their helper methods what about many to many so let's go ahead and get a movie so we'll do const movie equals await models dot movie dot create we'll set the status id to one writer id to one and director id to one with a title of attached create that movie here type it out there we are we see it all right, so thanks to our seeder, we know that we have plenty of synists and we know that we have somebody with an ID of one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So if we took those IDs and we wanted to bind them to this movie as either cast or crew members, what we could do is await movie dot related to reach for the relationship applicable for the action that we want to take. So we could do cast members to bind in a cast member here dot attach and then provide in an array of IDs for synists that we want to attach as cast members to this movie. So if we run that and we do await movie load cast members movie dot cast members dot map cast cast dot serialize, we're going to see three synest records bound to this movie as cast members. But hold that thought. What about our pivot table data? Well, that information isn't defined on the model itself. Anytime that we're working with the models, they will always return back instances of those models unless we call POYO as we have prior. Anything extra not defined on the model itself is bound onto an extras object. And by default, extras will not serialize with the model unless you explicitly tell it to. So first let's check and verify that this was the relationship that we had eagerly loading our pivot table data. Right there, yes it is. Okay, so let's jump over to our Sinus model. So on our model, all that we need to do is add serialize extras and set that to true. And now it will include those extras anytime that we serialize our model's results. So for example, if we take a look at movie.cast members as a whole, and we take a look at those raw data, within one of our Sinus models, as we see right here, we have a dollar sign extras object. This is where our pivot table data is. This is also where any aggregates go. So if we reach for movie.cast members, and we go for the first index, dot extras, We'll see our pivot movie ID, pivot synest ID, character name, sort order, created at and updated at columns. So all are accessible. However, we've bound these cast members without specifying a sort nor a character name. So let's go ahead and remove these synists from this movie. To do that, we can either remove everybody by doing await movie dot related cast members dot detach. And if we don't provide anything to detach, it will remove all cast members from this movie. However, we can scope this to just specific IDs by providing those in as well. So we've attached one, two, and three. They are the only synists bound to this movie. But if we only supply one and two, three will remain as a cast member. Right now though, we wanna go ahead and delete everybody. So we'll just go ahead and detach all together. I'm gonna go ahead and reload our model so that we get that serialized extra applied and we can see exactly what it does. So as a reminder, Here's the serialized results for our cast members without the serialized extra applied. All right, so we're back with a fresh REPL session and our movie requeried. Let's go ahead and do await movie related cast members dot attach. And for right now, let's just do the IDs one and two. We'll run that. We'll do await movie dot load the cast members and then movie dot cast members dot map cast cast dot serialize. And now whenever we run that, we're going to see meta applied onto these results as well with that extra information that was on the raw model instance whenever we inspected it. Now we need to take care of including pivot data information whenever we're attaching. So how can we do that? Well, let's go ahead and detach once more. So await movie related cast members detach and let's get a fresh instance. Okay, so let's get back to where we're attaching. So we'll do await movie related cast members attach instead of providing an array of IDs since we need to provide additional information with each one of the IDs that we're attaching which is what character they played and what sort we want them to display in we'll want to provide an object 
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our ending here and hit enter so that we do multi lines. The key for the object is going to be the ID of the record that we want to attach. So if we want to attach a sentence with an ID of one, the key would be one. And then for the value of this ID of one, we would provide an object with the additional information that should be attached onto the pivot table. So for our cast, this would consist of the character name, maybe that's Linus, and then the sort order. And we'll do a zero based index here. So we could do comma and then attach in a sentence with an ID of two, give them a character name of Snoopy and a sort order of one. Go ahead and end our attachment there and run that. My bad, I missed the curly brace there, so I retyped it here. We'll do curly brace and then end our parentheses, and then we can call that, and there we go. So now we can await movie.load our cast members, and then movie.castmembers.map cast cast dot serialize so that we can actually see the results here in our terminal and run that. And there we go. We have our sentence with an ID of one, and then their meta pivot table data includes a character name of Linus and a sort order of zero. And then our sentence with an ID of two here has a character name of Snoopy and a sort order of one. So that successfully got applied onto our pivot table data for those two relationships. So we know attach will take an array of IDs or an object with a key where the key is the ID and a value where the value is pivot table data as an argument. We know detach will take in an array of IDs or nothing at all. If we provide nothing at all, it will detach everybody. If we provide an array of IDs, it will only attach those with the IDs that we've provided. And there's actually a third argument as well. So if we do movie.related, stick with our cast members here, and there is a sync method that we can call that accepts the same arguments as attach does. So we could provide an array of IDs or we could provide a key value pair where the key is our attached ID, and the value for that key is the pivot table data. To keep things simple here, just to show what this does, we'll just provide an, an array of IDs. So we have an ID of one and two attached onto this movie. If we sync a sentence with an ID of three, run that. Oh, I forgot to await it, but it will have completed successfully by now. So we can move forward and do await movie.load, and we'll just reload our cast members to reload them. And movie.castmembers.map cast cast dot serialize, we'll see that all that we get back is the sentence with an ID of three. The other two were removed. And that's because sync will detach everybody and then reattach only those with the information that we've provided inside of sync, essentially syncing the data with whatever we have provided. Anything not provided is considered outdated and removed. And there we go. That's how you can manage your relationships with your Lucid models for one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many -many relationships.